There have been a few really disappointing performances this season, but one in particular stands out. Nicholas Latifi. He's failed to finish more than two places ahead of the last place driver this season, and with the season now well underway, teams are already looking at their lineups for next year. Nicholas Latifi is out of contract at the end of the season anyway, but could he be gone even sooner? Stick around to find out. With the Canadian Grand Prix just around the corner, the home fans will be lucky enough to see two of their kinsmen driving in Montreal, Lance Stroll and Nicholas Latifi. Unfortunately for you Canadians watching though, you might not have much to cheer about. Neither driver has impressed this season. Luckily for Lance Stroll, his dad owns the team that he races for, so there probably isn't too much risk of him being dropped anytime soon. Unfortunately for Nicholas Latifi, his dad Michael has a large amount of money invested in McLaren, not Williams, so he doesn't have the same safety net as Lance. Latifi is one of two drivers this season to not score a point, the other being Mick Schumacher who's driving for Haas. What is the most damning thing for Latifi though is that his teammate Alex Albon has actually looked relatively good in the Williams. Don't get me wrong, he hasn't been incredible, but not pitting until the penultimate lap of the Australian Grand Prix was a pretty impressive way to score your team's first points of the season. Latifi's issue is that he's just not comfortable in the new generation of cars. It is a problem that's affected drivers across the grid, but it seems far worse for him than anyone else. His best qualifying result is 18th, and he's been well off new teammate Alex Albon's single lap pace, which has frustrated his ambitions to take what he called a leadership role in the team. The 26-year-old said after the race at Imola that he's lacked confidence since the second event of the season in Saudi Arabia, and the problem arose independently of the crashes he's suffered this year. Since Saudi, I just haven't had a great feeling with the car. This is even before the crashes, said Latifi. Any driver will say that when you don't trust the car underneath you and what it's going to do, it can be a very dangerous thing. I don't mean dangerous in the aspect of safety, I mean the car catching you out, having incidents, and just not being comfortable to push to the limit. Even when the pace is relatively okay or strong, it's not necessarily that I have the feeling. Confidence is a huge thing in an F1 car. If you don't have it, you can't push right to the edge. And when everyone around you is driving right on the edge, even being a fraction of a percent point off your max can make it seem like you're far behind the field. It's just a feel and confidence thing with the car. It's not a driving style. I'm not braking too late and not carrying enough momentum or this and that. I really don't feel the confidence in the car. And when you lack confidence, you can't begin to work on the more technical aspects. And you eventually will have to work on those things. That will always be the case. Confidence first and then everything else is secondary really, Latifi said. Questions have been asked about his ability to find that confidence again and compete with the rest of the field. Latifi has never been a top-tier driver. In his 47 races to date, he scored points in two of them. A 7th place finish in Hungary in 2021 and a 9th place finish in the following race in Belgium. That race was rained off though, so his 9th place finish is just where he finished in qualifying. Before coming to Formula 1, he didn't have a glittering history of karting championship wins and junior Formula success either. A 2nd place finish in the 2019 Formula 2 championship is his best ever finish in a racing season. The question should not be whether Latifi can regain his confidence, it should be can Latifi improve to a standard where he can compete with the rest of the F1 field because he's never consistently proved he's at that level. With a whole host of talented drivers waiting in the F2 wings, Latifi has been asked if he's going to be at Williams for the rest of the season. I know I'm going to be driving for the rest of the year, he said, so don't really have many comments about that. If only he had that kind of confidence in his car. One thing that is for certain is that Latifi knows his career is on the line, with a Canadian admitting to the media that he must improve. I definitely feel I'm under pressure, Latifi admitted. I think it would be the same for any driver who doesn't have a contract for the following year. I think that pressure is always there, regardless of whether I was having great performances or where I am now, which is obviously not where I want to be. I obviously know I need to improve. I want to improve. I'm not happy with the way things are right now, so I'm just happy to try and keep making steps to improve it. We'll have to wait and see if he can improve quickly enough to save his seat for next year. Amid his current huge struggle for confidence in the car, the financial backing he brings might not be enough to keep him on board past 2022. Remember that since he's been on the team, the ownership has changed, and while the Williams family may have needed his money to keep the team going, the new owners, Doralton Capital, do not. Obviously, whenever a driver comes under pressure in their seat, rumors begin to fly about who's going to be replacing them. 
In Nicholas Latifi's case, the bookie's favorite is Oscar Piastri. This is a name you've probably heard a lot recently, but why is he being touted as the next driver to step up into F1? The young Australian has always shown incredible talent in the junior ranks, and he burst onto the scene in 2014 when he finished second in his debut British Formula 4 championship season with six wins. In 2019, 2020, and 2021, he won a total of 15 races as he won the Formula Renault Euro Cup, the Formula 3 and Formula 2 championships on the spin. However, regulations prevent drivers from re-entering junior series they've already won, and Piastri missed out on an F1 seat after Alfa Romeo chose to sign Zhou Guan Yu. He's actually the Alpine reserve driver at the moment and has spent some time at McLaren as well, but because he's unable to race in the junior categories anymore, he has spent 2022 just sat in F1 team garages, daydreaming about getting a drive. Piastri sees it as a moral obligation to try and get to Formula 1 on his own, without the need for a cash injection from his father. Pay drivers have been a feature of Formula 1 as long as Formula 1 has existed. They're drivers who get into the sport on the back of the money and sponsorship they can bring with them. Many of them are incredible drivers and completely deserve their spot on the grid. But if you aren't going to bring millions of dollars with you to your new team, and there is another driver with similar skills who will, it makes getting a seat hard. This is something that Latifi brings to the table. I said from the beginning to myself, if I get into F1, I'm going to get there because I deserve to be there, and not because my dad bought me a seat, because that defeats the purpose in my eyes of being a professional racing driver, because you're not a professional if that's the case. Piastri explained. For me morally, that was quite a major thing. While Piastri's moral dilemma may have stopped him from getting a seat at the start of the 2022 season, Latifi's struggles at Williams may mean he still gets a drive this year. Piastri is spending the 2022 season testing last year's Alpine, alongside his role as a team's reserve driver. The Australian was happy to take on that role for one season, with the agreement Alpine would find him a race seat for 2023. Piastri is under contract with Alpine for next year, but it is thought to have a release clause of some kind if he does not have a deal agreed for him to race in F1 by the end of June. Alpine don't want to lose him as a driver. They, like many others, see him as a serious talent for the future. So what it seems they're going to do is loan him out to Williams, and that could start from as soon as the British Grand Prix at Silverstone on the 1st to the 3rd of July. There are conflicting reports about this, though. Some sources are saying that Piastri will be driving at the British Grand Prix, while others are saying that his place for 2023 will be announced then. It is tough to know which of these is true, as, to be honest, both are very feasible. Whatever ends up getting announced at the start of July, it's guaranteed at this point that we'll be seeing Piastri in a Williams from at least 2023, and it'll be Nicholas Latifi who makes way for him. Do you think Latifi has been poor enough to lose his seat mid-season? Or should he at least be given the opportunity to fight for his seat at another team in 2023? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. Until we see you next time, drive safe and bye-bye.